Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Energy Matters. In each episode, we'll bring in an expert and talk about different issues related to the industry. In today's episode, we have not one, but two very special guests, Andrew and Cami from Madeira Group, a company specializing in helping fuel dealers with all things marketing related. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. And I'm just going to get started with you, Andrew. What type of services uh, does Madeira Group provide for your clients? I started work for the company called the Energy Engine, and they supply dealers with an e-commerce solution that runs behind the website that takes online orders for heating oil and propane. What we found was we would sell them the software and they'd be like, hey, I know I need this, but what do I do with it? How do I be successful with it? Who is it exactly for? In building those relationships, they were like, we would like for you to, to do the, the marketing or the consulting or the, you know, show us how to use the software. And that's how it started. The industry we work in is consolidated. That said, we're so fortunate to be working with a lot of clients that are on the buying side of that. Some of them have these extremely aggressive acquisition schedules where they're looking to acquire companies at a fairly regular pace. And that takes a lot of work. A lot of good companies getting their businesses ready for sale, they have a good marketing plan. They have a lot of you know, digital assets that we need and need to take under management and make sure that we can make that transition of that customer base smooth. And we are just laser focused on minimizing attrition and building value in the transition of that customer base from company AB to CD. Um, another thing on the day-to-day -day, um, for myself and, and a couple others is, you know, kind of taking a look at their technology stack. Some companies are, are, are over-teched. Some companies are under-teched. With so many different platforms out there nowadays, um, we find that if you can really focus and, 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 and be optimal with your business by utilizing a few different pieces of technology that also talk to each other, it makes for every single individual, all the different teams, all the different layers of the business to be much more successful. And ultimately, the customers be happier because... If internal communication and technology is smooth and everyone understands how to use it, well, I don't see how the customers aren't going to feel that and know, wow, this, these guys got me, you know, like it's good. Uh, we are seeing a trend where for the energy companies, a lot of customers are shifting to will call. They don't want to be automatic. They don't want to be committed. How do you think companies should react to that? Should they just embrace it? What do you, what do they got to do? Or do you, do you, do you advocate certain strategies to overcome that? We have a couple of customers, clients that we work with that have six different layers of pricing. A1 to A6. Do you discriminate just because someone doesn't want to pay your A1 price? Do you discriminate because someone from A1 went to A5? You paid for that customer already. You, whatever that customer acquisition cost was, you paid for it. Ed Miller, I'm going to steal a, a comment from Ed Miller. I'll take them all because like there's that. margin in every customer. And if you communicate to them, right, you'll have them as a customer in one capacity or another. Is there a shift into will call? Yeah, lately there has been because the volatility in the market has been nuts. But if you're showing those people that are getting ready to make that change to will call, what the cap customers, what the price protection customers saved last year by protecting the price of their fuel, you're going to have people going the other way or preserving yeah. them from going to will call. But if they want to go, it's okay. It's a, it costs less to do business with a will call customer. Yes. Especially if you put them online and will call margin is going like this. 
Yep. When online fuel sales first started, and I was kind of, when it really was hot, that was when I was selling the e-commerce software, and it was a race to the bottom. Like everyone yeah. was like, "Oh, I got to get customers!" Like you know, all these crazy offers, new customer offers, and you know, we're working on thirty-eight cent margins. Well, everyone was like, decided to wake up finally and go, "Okay, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that." Um, it was like they all woke up and were like, "Okay, everybody, knock it off. Let's you know, let, let's play nice." And online fuel sale margin is literally climbing because there's a convenience to it. Maybe there's a small shift, but the market dictates a little bit the shift. But you can you can change you can change that with good right. customer communication and pointing out the value in what maybe you want them to and how you yeah. want them to your fuel. And I also think a uh, modern consumer, which tends to be, you know, getting younger in age, also would like to have more agency in their buying thing, right? Buying as an act of I'm buying fuel as opposed to I don't know when you're going to show up. I'm just going to trust you. Like it's that trust level that I think is also shifting with the younger generation. Like, so that's why I also feel like uh, companies that are not online are losing big time right companies that are not offering the opportunity for people to do that are just completely losing it because you're basically ignoring a, a chunk of the market that's only growing I, I i tell clients and and prospects that our new customer acquisition strategy for them is kind of like dating in the profession <laughs> right so we're going to use the online dating version so you find them on the online dating right you start to chat a little bit to see if you like each other right great so we reach out to you with pay-per-click and good seo you find us online we start to kind of like do a little bit of research on you know what kind of company we are you check out our reviews you come to the website it's our first date mm -hmm. and you decide like hey do i want to go to dinner and maybe you make your first online purchase and then it's like what's the follow-up did you call her the next day and say you had a good time? Did you follow up on the delivery and say, hey, did you, was it everything go okay with the delivery? And you fast forward through the dating process to full service customer. You're married with two kids, the white picket fence and the dog barking, you know? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, if you want them to be A1 customers, date them. Email marketing. Does this still work these days? How should they be doing it? Like, what do you, what do you guys think? Email marketing is, is one of those things, you know, I, I made the reference before about like, if you're just going to send out this big thing to a herd of cattle, you might get one, two, three, you know, shots. There's this thing that we like to, to use as email fatigue. And mm -hmm. if you, if you use up one of your sends for the month, on a happy holidays email with no purpose intent for the send. It's like, okay, that was your, that's your one of two looks you're going to get, you know, that's your one or two opens you're going to get from that person. That's your choice. We would prefer, as we talked about before, I want segmented smaller batches going every day, you know, if a customer has, we have clients with very large email lists. So we have, let's just use an example. We have a client that has a list of 20,000 customers, right? I want to be doing batches of 1,200, 700, 3,000, you know, like it's budget season. Okay. We need all the people that last year were on a budget plan. Okay. Here's what the cap price is going to be. Here's what your budget payment is going to be, you know? Okay, let's send to those people. Now we're going to move over to just the pre-buy people. And so it's like, if you're segmenting really, really well. We're seeing, and that's what we do. You're seeing 47, 53% open. So the answer to the question, oh yes, we're still doing email marketing and we still push it very hard, but in a very different fashion than I think a lot of other people are using it because just the press send to all contacts those days. Yeah, you're uh, you're gonna see your your unsubscribe count go. What do you think? Some of the old way that that you see that people are still kind of 
stuck in. We had one the other day. Uh, I don't need a website. I was like, did you, what did you just say to me? It's, it, it's things like that, that are, are, are just items you hear, you know, along the, the, the path. And it's like, you, so you're not going to conferences. You're not trying to, you know, better your customer experience. And you obviously don't care about SEO. You don't care about where you sit and reside with Google. I'm like, hey, I found your, your, your website on the second page of Google. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, this, that's where companies go to die. And, um, you know, you walk them through those things professionally, elegantly, because a lot of those times when you're talking to that avatar that thinks that way, right, they have 30, 40, 50 years of running their family owned and operated business and they're passionate and pretty successful and pretty successful at it. Right. Yes, so they were they, like, why do I have to change this? Yeah. Yeah. They've done great to hear. And whether their mindset is like, oh, I'm going to sell in two years or not sell in two years, they are doing their business, the people that work there and their customers a complete disservice. There's a timeline. There's an expiration date on that business if they choose not to optimize and build for the modern day consumer. What Andrew said is uh, what we're facing basically every day. And we are introducing a new shift in the mentality towards of how they need to see all these new platforms, the social media, the email marketing. One of the platforms that we are working very, very heavily on is LinkedIn. And we want to introduce that to them to make sure that on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, they have to have a presence there. They don't realize LinkedIn in U.S., um, there is like a 200 million users. And this is like a professional platform where nowadays uh, there is a lot of studies that a lot of companies make the, the, their decision to recruit people uh, based on, uh, on on LinkedIn profiles and how well you're performing. So this is the mentality that we are facing every day too and, and, the, we intru- and educating them where the industry is going and why they need to be there for their brand awareness, for brand positioning and for brand recognition. So it seems like marketing is like last on on companies mind like they focus on sales they focus on a lot of other stuff but when it comes to marketing they're just like eh it's not that big of a deal that's very common right why do you think marketing is such you know that low on the priority list someone smarter than me when i first got in this business said andrew just remember this and you'll do okay the fuel dealers are very tangible if they can't touch it they can't see it they can't feel it they don't believe it and they don't think they should have it and a lot of the tactics and techniques and strategies that are should be implemented today are not tangible things. They can't see it happening in real life, whether it's SEO, pay-per-click, you know, and stuff like that. Like they can't see these, some of these tactics that are so super, super important. If you can have that conversation with them, you know, early on and help them understand that, yes, it is important. The rolling billboard that's full of oil and propane going down the street, very important. But we need certain things on there. It's ABC oil and your big, beautiful, pretty trucks that you're tangible and your logos, but put the website address on there. Available, online ordering available. You know, like put some things on there that shows that that traditional 50, 60, 70 year old company has also taken that step into modernizing their business in a business that they haven't felt like they needed to. And, and this isn't everyone, don't get me wrong. You know, they, they're, Absolutely. there are a yeah. lot of companies that we work with, that, that even that we don't work with, um, that are making those transitions very quickly. One thing that become obvious when I start talking to you two was that you guys are basically tightly integrating your, your services, your offerings into tech, technology. Uh, I found it interesting that you said some companies are overstacked. Like when you assess their tech stack, you said they were overstacked. But what are you seeing that, that make you say that? And what's going on with those companies? I actually asked Nate, Dennis, and Saul, three <laughs> very highly respected people, not only at Cargus, but in our industry. I had them recently on my podcast and I said to them, I said, you know, what's the ultimate tech stack? And they answered it very similarly. And They said, you got to have a really good back office system. You really got to have really good routing software and you better have a really good damn marketing platform. And they left all this other stuff out. 
Like all the the fluff is it was out. I agree. So you find you get into some of these companies and they're like, oh, we have this thing that does this and we have this thing that does that. And I'm like, well, why? Like you could have it all in one because us having to go and ask clients for, hey, can you pull this segmented list of customers that only have an AC service contract with you so we can market to the rest of them and exclude those out because we're going to run a special promotion to those people to try to get them on AC service contracts. It's like pulling teeth. My dream is to one day have back office connected to their CRM, connected to the marketing automations tool that we use every single day. So we can just literally pull out the lists that we need. That person's going to be the winner. Because it, when we say the modern day energy consumer, stop talking to people about things they already have or don't want. Because I, I'll, I'll unsubscribe to any company that tries to push stuff on me that one, I already have or already tried and didn't like, or continuing to treat me as like, kind of like this big herd of cattle, like talk to, I, I want a more personal experience. And if you're not going to give the customer the personal experience, there's someone down the road that will. Can you share either of you about some specific marketing trends in the industry? that you noticed this past year or two, uh, just to enlighten uh, the rest of uh, our viewers here. What have you seen that you noticed specifically? We're, we're, I mean, Cam, Cammy will you know, yeah. talk to you until you're blue in the face about it, but we are starting to use AI. We're starting to use AI. And we're really going to use it more and more and more. You know, for some people, it's scary. For others, yeah. we look at it as like the most amazing tool in the world. I'm very passionate about AI because um, this is exactly, I read a very interesting article, tried to find um, by, by um, I think it was the New York Times, when they compare how, what is the reaction right now of people receiving AI and when it was internet introduced. Everyone was scared about internet, just in general, that you can find anything there. You don't have any more like the yellow pages. People were just scared that you can find anything and anytime there. And then now this is like every day that we cannot live without it. So I feel very much with the AI is like that, but we have to be careful of how we use it and to be implemented on a daily basis the most uh, in the most efficient way. So all the... Uh, marketing automation tools and many more that are coming probably every year and they will be are on the base of AI not that advanced but it, they used AI as a one as a platform now for example I'll give um, uh, I'll give a really interesting example with Canva Canva introduced to a, a month ago they had a live stream introducing their new services where every single part of the design stuff was introduced with ai so ai integration is already there like it or not it is there like you type whatever you want to see and it will be there so um is is something that we need to learn how to use to help us on our daily and it help us to make our daily decisions better because this is very connected to programmatic marketing. Programmatic marketing is based on customization. So it's very customized based on who your audience is and how your ad is going to be received. Programmatic marketing was very much going very, very deep to who you're talking to, when, how. And this is just advanced level on top of that. That prediction, mm -hmm. that forecast is making you is making your life much more easier nowadays to make the better decisions for your business. It's okay to be scared about tech. I always say to them, you know, when it comes to those conversations around AI, remember when, remember when Google was coming around there, it was like, ah, oh, Google thing, you know, whatever, it's not going to survive, you know, or whatever. It's just a thing. It's a trend, you know, or whatever. Amazon, same thing. AI might even be a step above that. In my yep. opinion. I it's agree with you. Yeah. It might be more because AI has the ability to, it can manipulate some of the algorithms that are set up by Google, by mm -hmm. some of the search engines on how we rank. So we use the AI in conjunction with some of our, you know, our abilities and strategies right now, but yeah. You better get comfortable with AI because it's if you don't, you're going to get left in the dust. What do you think is the one most crucial thing 
when it comes to marketing that companies need to be doing these days to elevate their marketing or take that next step or whatever that, that they're not doing that you just see they're just not doing what's that one thing that you would say okay i'm i i just don't know why companies just not not doing this i really miss company talking more about their culture about their mm. uh, 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 social responsibility about their leadership vision mission this is how you keep loyal customers with you this is how you share where you are at the moment i don't like and i'm not fan of two salesy promotions get goers mm. because this is easy come easy go if you want a quality if you want a brand awareness if you want a uh, brand recognition you need to create that culture and you need to speak about that culture you shouldn't be shy about talking about how you make the decisions what's your leadership what's your recruitment process who you're working with how you take care of your employees those are the things that uh, i think i need to stress the most and social media specifically linkedin talk about we're talking about companies who have been 50 16 90 years on the market talk about yep. that how do you survive those years has been so many you know economical changes you know how did you deal with COVID? how did you deal with the economic crisis in 2008 9 you know what what did you do like i want to to hear more about success stories from the companies and their culture and how they kept together through all these years more it's yep. just consistency marketing is not a light switch you know I, I kind of made that analogy to you know bring on new customers and dating like you know you have a really great first date and you know and then maybe the second one goes pretty good too but then you you know you don't call her like what happens you know so like consistently marketing not dropping the ball when it comes to even like little things here and there don't have 16 different logos pick you're gonna be a house of brands you're gonna be a branded house you know like pick one they'll come they'll, they'll, they'll come just be consistent all right yeah. cool so two different really uh practical advices from from each of you there i love it so all right i just want to wrap this up thank you so much for you guys' time i just really appreciate you too so much and i mean we can go on and on marketing is a subject that's dear in my heart so uh thank you guys i really appreciate it and that's a wrap for today's episode of energy matters we hope it's been helpful please continue to tune in for our future episodes and we'll see you on the next one yeah.